Hi. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about CIP and the effect of the product on the process. So when it comes to CIP, you've got four major levers. You've got the time, the temperature, the flow rate, and the concentration of the product, um, as in the cleaning chemicals. But another thing that impacts the actual cleanliness of the plant, the soiling of the plant, is the actual physics and chemistry of the product that you are processing. So for example, you have to consider the physical properties of the molecule, how large they are. Uh, then you're thinking about the physics and the chemistry. Um, what sort of molecules are they? Are they proteins? Are they fats? Are they sugars? So I've got an example here of a caramelized product. Obviously, if you're working in a plant with caramel, caramel and sugar is going to stick in the system much more easily. If I were to put it on this particular surface and pour it on, you'll see it'll be very sticky. It's more dense, it, it's more viscous. So viscous, obviously to thinking about the friction between the molecules and density, how closely packed those molecules are. You're also thinking about the microbial load in the product. If you're handling fresh dairy product, how long it's been stored, what has been the time temperature combination from farm to when you're processing it, all of this can impact microbial load. The longer the storage time, obviously the more microbial load, the more you're giving the chance to bacteria to grow in the system. Bacteria such as Salmonella, Listeria, Bacillus cereus for example. So when you're dealing with nutritional powders, you want to get the product uh, all the way from farm to process and process as quickly as possible. Normally within about 24 hours, if you can do that, or even quicker, even better. So if you're an, op an operator sitting in the control room, really important that you're considering how long you're storing your product. Coming back to CIP, you have a range of products. So a company producing juice or beer or wine, each of you would be using CIP systems as well. So you do need to consider your unique product that you're cleaning. If you're producing product with different types of ingredients, in this case, I've got an example of chocolate milk. It's milk with chocolate. So when you're thinking about a CIP system, you're always checking, is your system adequate for the kind of soil? This is not just regular dairy product, this is also chocolate. So you should run it for a longer time, better concentration of the product, using the right chemicals for the right task. When it comes to CIP, uh, as with all cleaning systems, caustics used for soft soils. So within dairy product, for example, the protein, the fat, the cream. Acids used for more hard soils, things that get baked on, harder to remove. So things like mineral deposits, calcium deposits, for example. So it's really important that you're thinking about physics and chemistry as well of your product when it comes to CIP. You could be producing ice cream, butter, cheese, a range of different products, and each of this has a different soil forming property. So do consider all the elements of your products in addition to your four main levers of time, temperature, flow rate, and um, your mechanical action to maximize the efficiency of your CIP systems. Learn more and book now. Food safe. Training solutions and services for high performance people and food companies.